Thanks for joining us once again on ECMID television so that we can bring you in advance of ECMID uh, in April coming up in 2017, we can bring you a little bit of a taste of who the presenters are, what they're doing, how they're doing, and what you've got to look forward to at what promises to be the 27th ECMID, the best one ever. So as you can see, joining us on this particular episode of our ECMID TV channel is Sophie Helene. She's from the Imperial College in London at the MRC Centre for Molecular Bacteriology and Infection. And she's going to be presenting for the first time ever, I understand, at an ECMID. So, Sophie, it's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. Um, how do you feel? A bit nervous about your first time ever? How is it for you? Yes, I feel a bit nervous about uh, it. It's such a big meeting. I do feel a bit nervous, absolutely. But I'm also very excited to share my work. Well, you know there's only going to be 11 or 12,000 people there. It's not that big, really. <laughs> no, thank you very much. I feel much better now. <laughs> no pressure now, obviously. Um, but you're looking forward to presenting a keynote there as well. And yes. um, as a doctor at the Imperial College working in your area, um, Salmonella is one of your chosen areas of, of operation as well, isn't it? But you've been looking quite strongly, I believe, into how bacteria evade antibiotics. And not only yes. are you speaking on it, but you're well published on it as well. What's okay, happening? What's, what's the story behind it all? The story behind it is that I'm interested in bacterial persistence. So you were right, I use salmonella, that's my model organism, the model pathogen I study. Mm -hmm. And so I'm interested in persistence that are these bacteria which are tolerant to any antibiotic treatment. Basically, you cannot kill these bacteria. They, are, they form a part of a bacterial population. It's usually a small part of a bacterial population. Yes. But no matter how hard you try, you can't kill them. And they are a problem because they are thought to be responsible for the persistence of many bacterial infections. It means that uh, many infections are prone to relapse or recur over time. So you think you have cleared the infection with antibiotics, it comes back and it keeps coming back. So that's the case of very serious infections such as tuberculosis or typhoid fever. And salmonella is responsible for typhoid fever. But it's also the case of very common infections such as UTIs or tonsillitis, for example. Yes, and that's going to be the chosen topic of your keynote when you present yes. at ECBID. Yes. So what can the audience expect to learn from your keynote without giving all of it away? What are the key findings, mm -hmm. do you think? So we discover that when salmonella encounters the host during infection, it senses stresses that are triggered by the host, and these stresses are signals that tell salmonella to form many more persistence than it would usually. So it means that a bigger part of the population is going to become persistence. So persistence are bacteria which are non-growing, they become dormant, if you, if you will, yes. and because they are dormant, they can't be killed by the antibiotics. And so when salmonella encounters the host, it forms many more dormant bacteria. And so we investigate how these bacteria are formed, which bacterial genes are important for the formation of these bacteria, and which are the stresses during infection that lead to the formation of these bacteria. So this is what I'm going to discuss about. So what are you hoping to do then as a result of the knowledge that you're gathering? So what we're hoping to do is not necessarily to prevent the formation of these persisters because we understood that whenever the infection happens, very early on the persisters are formed. So trying to prevent their formation is probably delusional. However, what we're trying to do is to understand how they are formed and how they can survive in the host, hoping that we could force them out of persistence so they would be sensitized again to the antibiotics. And so, as you say, more responsive to treatment in the form of antibiotics yes. in their own particular regard. It sounds fascinating. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the keynote itself. Let me ask you, though, about Ekman now generally, if I may. What are you most looking forward to about attending Ekman in Vienna this coming year? Um, I'm hoping for a different perspective, a different point of view. I'm used to present my work to bacteriologist meetings that are very specialized and we all know these bacterial genes really well. I'm looking for a broader perspective from, you know, infectious and many of, diseases. And many of the people at ECMID that I've met at my own time there over the past couple of years have really stressed the importance of being able to network with so many of your global peers. This seems to be the platform, the, the, the meeting place for everybody who's involved in your specific field and the wider range of clinical biology across the world. It's, it's quite exciting, really, isn't it? It's very exciting, yes. 
very excited. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. And we're looking forward to seeing you there as well. It remains for me, Sophie. Uh, and Doctor, to thank you very much indeed for uh, taking up your time to let us know a little bit of what's in store. I think it's going to be standing room only in your in your hall at the uh, at the presentation in its own right. And I certainly hope so, because you're talking about a very important subject. Thanks for being thank with us. Thanks very much. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. We'll see you in Vienna. See you. Yeah.